Hi, welcome to part four or section four. Now we are gonna move on to the to the repair topic, which is a logarithm. So, this is a, the the kind of like the the inverse problem. What is the inverse problem? Like we we have we have this idea in math everywhere. Like whenever we, we we introduce a new concept, we can ask the inverse question. So for instance, once we introduce the plus symbol. And you know how to you know add things together to plus three is five, five plus nine is fourteen, and so on. <clears throat> so this kind of question is uh, going doing things like in forward. So you are given two numbers and you are asked to you know perform some operation. And once we have this kind of problem, then we we will encounter <clears throat> uh, a problem where instead you no know, you you have you need some operation with some unknown number to get the result we want. And so we have one starting number and we have the result and we ask what do we have to apply that? What number we have to apply to the starting number to get the result we want? <clears throat> and this kind of question we, we need to invent or we need to introduce a new notation. And in, in this case, of course, we what we introduce is we introduce minus. So the answer, the question mark here is number 4, because 2 plus 4 is 6, so 6 minus 2 is 4. In this, in this question, we are asking 2 plus what is 6, and the answer is 4, <coughs> which happens to be the same question of what is 6 minus minus 2. So these two questions are equivalent and they are equivalent because we introduced the new word called minus. <coughs> so that's the, the inverse problem for the plus that we have we have to introduce or we have to invent the the symbol minus. Uh, likewise for multiplication you can ask the the forward question where you have two numbers and you, you multiply them together. So 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times 5 is 20, and so on and so forth. But likewise, if you ask to multiply by what, you get 8. So again, 2 times what is 8. <coughs> and to solve this kind of problem, which arise a lot like you, you have you have a box with two items you want eight items how many boxes do you have to buy and then in in this wording like it, it feels more natural okay, but <clears throat> in this case we have to invent like, the division so eight divided two give you the answer we want which is four and again, likewise, once we have, once we, once we introduce a new notation, like we can then ask what is h divided by what is in the way divided by two. See the question mark. <clears throat> so that's how the multiplication and division. They are paired together. A division is invented or is a divide letter that will be the counterpart or to be the inverse problem of the multiplication. <clears throat> Likewise, like what we have here is a exponent. Uh, usually there, there, there's no there, there are several notations for exponent. Uh, let me use it this way. Because this is this is a symbol you, you need to use when you want to type anything about exponent. Like for instance, if you have, if you go if you go back to this uh, calculator, if you want to tie two, three to the power of two, you would have to you have to tie the that that symbol like, like the the arrow up, <clears throat> and now you can compute the exponent. That's also that, but again, it's not that convenient. So it is easier to just type. And you can click on that, boop, and then click two to get three square. Or you can type three and then that 
symbol and then to to get three square as well so back to the notation sometimes there's a exp exponent with some high a little mass and to, to make it similar to you know to function like sine cosine log all those things <laughs> uh, but yeah anyway for exponent you we can have you can we can compute to the power of three that's what eight <coughs> we can compute for to the power of one half which is two Likewise, we can ask the question, 2 to the power of what is 16? 2 to the power of what is 16? Uh, before, before we proceed, let me get, make a remark, uh, remark that. Uh, you may ask, wait, why, why do we have to you know, ask for the, for the top? Like, can we ask for this kind of question instead? Like can we have you know can we fix the, the the exponent and ask for the base instead? The answer is yes, you can. But that kind of question was about the polyno polynomial. So it's the same as you know asking x square solving x square equals to sixteen. And we learned that already. That you know you have to subtract that and then factor out or use the formula and get the result. So we learned that already. We can just take the, the nth root of the number or, you know, change it around and maybe use graph to help us get an estimate of the solutions or of the, the roots of the numbers. So yeah, you can ask that question, but that was something we studied already earlier. Now we ask a different question. What if we, we fix the base? Like because again, if you go back to the definition, it's, it's, a, it's a function where the base is already fixed and we change the exponent and so it makes sense that in this kind of question we change the exponent <coughs> the exponent is unknown 2 to the power of what is 16 like 2 to the power of what power of what is 16 again that's a that's a natural question for instance if, if, if I go back and Maybe let's take a look at this. I suppose that there. Let's, let's go back to the wheat and, or oh not wheat, I think it's grain. Anyway, wheat and chessboard problem. Now usually we, 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 we are given k, like k, k space, and then we can determine how many grains of, of wheat we have to put in that space. But sometimes we have the inverse problem. Suppose we, 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 we only have like, one million grains in our warehouse or in our what's the name of that? Hello. Like you you might want to ask how many days can we last <laughs> like <clears throat> until we run out of wheat? And again that's a natural question to ask. Based on this growth or based on this function, if we have the result, how many times can we multiply to that result? At most. And so we that brings us to this kind of problem. And you have the base. You don't know the, the exponent and you don't know how many times to know the multiply. But you have the de desired result. And of course, like just like the addition and multiplication, like we have to invent or we have to introduce a new notation. And this one this one is not it's gonna be slightly different. Like because for subtra for subtraction and division, you just introduce a new a new symbol. But for the exponent, like we kind of introduce a new a new function. I, I will show you in a moment. But this function is log base two of sixteen. And so this log like kind of serves as a function. I guess it is six minus two. 8 divided by 2 log base 2 of 16 and the answer here is of course 4 <coughs> because you know you can compute that and the way we read this is uh, and we, tran we translate that to a new question so that would ask what is the log base 2 
of 16. Asking for the for the exponent, right? Be, be becomes a new kind of question. What is a log base four base base? Also, sorry, not base two. Base two as a number two. What is it? The log base two of sixteen, and the answer is four. Oh, I didn't have four everywhere. That's coincident. Anyway, that's that's the idea. <clears throat> like given the base and given the the, the goal. Or the objective, where can you find the, the appropriate exponent to fill in the gap? And that's uh, that's where we are at. Like we introduce this new function, right? And we uh, we also have to introduce a, a new way to write this function, right? Because again, like if you if you take a look at the minus and division, now like you can write everything in the in the same line. Almost because division usually you, you usually write as uh, numbers as a, as a ratio as a fraction <coughs> even though they mean the same thing yeah, but <coughs> we need to indicate that we you know, we divide and like there's some some kind of like physical action of that you have eight items on top and you divide it you put it down into two groups and so that's why we have eight over two in this notation likewise the way we write lock in this way because it's it it mimics the, the the positions of the exponent. The two is below, and the numbers are above. Okay, so you can see that two is down here and four is up there. Uh, but again, it's still a sixteen. That shouldn't be in the same line as four. But <clears throat> at least it gives you the idea that oh, okay, two is the best. It it is, it is not ambiguous what we do here. Okay, right, just like the division. Okay, the, the the one above is the the first one, and then the one in, at the bottom is the the, the divider. Likewise, okay, two is the base, so we put it below. Sixteen is the the number. So that's that's the the idea of logarithm function. And yeah, we have the inverse problem where you might you know you might ask a question instead. So instead of asking for <coughs> we, instead of giving day and get the number of grains, you are given number of grains and ask how many days. So that's the that's the reverse. So now let's uh, get to the definition, right, because again this is a new notation and definition might not make sense in the first place, but it takes some time to be familiar with this the new notation. And yeah, we cannot achieve this via addition nor multiplication. And we cannot use any previous no operations to, to solve this problem. So we have to invent and define a new function. And here it is. This is a function. <coughs> and before we define that, we, we, we have to just have some base. So if x is equal to b to the power of y, like what we have above 16 is 2 to the power of 4. But then we can, you know, rewrite this as, okay, if <clears throat> 2 to the power of what? x16? The answer is 4. Notice the position of x and y and b. Like b is the bottom, so it's the base here. y no, is over there and x is over there <clears throat> and yeah, the, the, the way we think about this is you know, use this kind of switch b to the p, b to the y is x and it's kind of you know a spiral b to the y is x you know just just like if you, if you have 2 times 4 equal to x then 2 is x over 4 then we say okay for times 2 is 8 <coughs> before times 2 is 8 likewise like likewise if you have 2 to the 4 equal to 16 so you have 4 equals to log bit 2 of 16 then the question you ask the question you ask is or the, the, the way you see is it's 2 to the power of 4 is 16 yeah, that's similar to what we already have, but 
I know that sometimes when when you when you use the same thing over and over again without, you know, uh, understanding what where it came from, then you might not notice this kind of pattern. <coughs> but yeah, if if you see that oh, it's actually what we already knew, but we use it a lot, so we lost a track of where it came from. And if you and if you, if you record that, then you can apply the same knowledge to this new function. Okay, so that's the <clears throat> that's the the way you achieve that. So yeah, let's let's use some the definition of the logarithmic logarithm function to define to find the following. Okay, so for a. We do find log base 3 of 9. We don't know that, right? Because again, we just do it by hand and maybe that's the first time you see this. But this is asking, like if you translate that to the the, the language of exponent, we are finding a number that rest t to that power to get a 9. So that's what the question is about. <coughs> 3 to the what is 9. And here you can see, maybe maybe not immediately, but you know, shouldn't, be, shouldn't, shouldn't take too much time to notice that the answer is two. Right, and therefore, <coughs> the answer is two. Or maybe I should I should keep it this way as, as linear. You don't know what is two. Oh, um, <coughs> actually, let, let me put it as a variable. We want we want to find x. We know that 3 to the power of x is 9. And so x is 2. And that's it for a. <coughs> oh, in, the, on, in other words, we can write log base 3 of 9 is equal to 2. Because that was x in the first place. For b, we have log base 4 of 64. Oh, sorry. Did I have a... Oh, I forgot to add that. <clears throat> yeah, but it, it, it reads logar the logarithm with base b of x, which, which I abbreviate as log base b of x. <clears throat> okay, that's how you read this. So now we have log base 4 of 64. Let's say it's something we don't know. Let's say it's x, but it's pink. So let's find the pink x. So we know that like by the definition we can, you know, raise 4 to the power of x. Raise that to get 64. What is x? Then you can do this by x experiment to see that x is 3. And so the answer is 3. Uh, in other words, log base 4 of 64 equals to 3. <clears throat> Lastly, we have log bit 2 of 1 over 32. Again, it's something we don't know yet. But we can use exponential to help us determine that. So 2 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 32. And then what is 1 over 32? And because sometimes you, you see some fraction, like as long as they are positive, and it's good. Oh, I, I, I think I forgot to mention that. Yeah, the, the base and the number here, they are both positive. But, but y can be negative. Could be negative. So let's come back here. <clears throat> now, what did x? What could be the value of x? Like, can, can you multiply 2 by some number of times to get a fraction? The answer is yes, because if you recall that, if you have 2 to the power of negative number, you get 1 over 2 to that power. So that's what we got from exponential function. And actually, if you do that, if, if you try to, you know, de decipher or factor this out, 32 is 2 to the power of 5 or 2 to the fifth. And this, if you, if you compare this to what we have up here, and it can be rewritten as 2 to the minus 5 
to the power of minus 5. And so now we can see that x is minus 5. In other words, log base 2 of 1 over 32 is minus 5. So that's the, the answer for these three exercises. <clears throat> Again, just, you know, use the, the basic definition and use some knowledge about exponents to help us solve these problems. And yeah, before we go into the deep details about properties, then <clears throat> let's take a break and see about graphs. Like what does a graph look like? Um, actually, that that there was um. Again, if, if I have more time, I, I would go into the de details about graph reading. <clears throat> but um, there was <clears throat> an interesting theorem that says that if you have y equals to f of x. Then you can you can invert the graph along this diagonal that passed through the origin. Now you can invert the graph and get the graph x equals to sorry get the graph y equals to f inwards of x. <clears throat> uh, then again, I didn't teach about inverse function because that's x a y. <clears throat> But what we, what, what we are doing here is essentially the inverse function. The inverse problem that I, I talk about. Uh, but, but what that means is that um, <clears throat> since we have the graph y equals to 2 to the x this way, right, then we can immediately get the graph of the inverse function of that, which happens to be log base 2 of x. <clears throat> which is just a, a reflection of the exponential graph right, around the diagonal line, the southwest to northeast diagonal line. And so you can see that if you, you know, rotate your head by 90 degrees, then <clears throat> these two graphs match. Oh yeah, to, to, to make it more convincing, I think I should just give you a the graph because if you compare y equals to uh, 2 to the x what's that y equals to log base 2 of x you can see there just an, a reflection <coughs> along this line let me make it dot dash a dash which is nice and cool. Yeah, but anyway, if, if you know that there are reflections, then you can derive some cool properties. Uh, but for now, yeah, let's just <clears throat> just look, take a look at the graph and see if you can find anything interesting about this graph. And the first thing we can see is that um, the graph starts at zero. Or oh, not at zero, but uh, start as a positive number. Right, the graph doesn't exist on the left of this graph the left of this number. So that's, that's, that's what we mean by, you know, the by fixing both B and X to be positive. <clears throat> X, the value of X cannot be negative this way. So that's one thing. The second thing is that you can see that the result could be negative as we just did earlier. I notice that um, the, for the exponent, this is always positive. But for the logarithm, it could be positive, it could be negative, depending on the value of x, whether it's greater than 2 or less than 2. Oh, sorry, greater than <coughs> 1 or less than 1. And also, there's uh, some interesting point over here. Right, but if you compare all the graphs over there, you can see that they all pass through this point. Now this point is a, is, a, is a point where x is 1 because it's, it's on the x axis, it's between 0 and 2. So x is 1. And y is 0 and because it's, it's on the x axis. <coughs> so y is 0. So based on this graph, you can, you can conclude or you can make a, make a conjecture that 
Oh, if x is 1, then y should be 0. So this means that for any base, if x is 1, y is 0. Mm. And this is what this point tells us about the property of the function. And maybe you should put a question mark first because, again, this is just for examples. But this is actually, we, we can prove this um, quickly. And because again, what does it mean? It means we read b to the power of 0 is 1. So, is that true? Uh, yes, it's true. b to the power of 0 is 1. No, it's true, so I should put the mark like that. <coughs> okay, so that's one thing we can, we can see about the graph. <coughs> oh, actually two things. Uh, and some other um, interesting aspects or properties, like again, it is um, strictly increasing. It is increasing. Where do you write that? Increasing. So it's getting higher and higher and higher as x gets higher. And also, you can, you know, notice the 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 order of the graph. Like if if you put put pick a point, let's say four, right, and see that. You can see that the red part is, is the highest and the red one is actually the log base 2. <coughs> so this is greater than log base t of the same number. Greater than log base 4 of the same number and so forth. And you have to think about it for, for a second or for a minute to see why this is true. Right? Because usually if, if you, you know, just look at the two number, oh, 2 and 3. So 3 is greater than 2, right? Right? Not quite. That, that, that was an interesting story that back then when some company, I think it's Burger King, they make an uh, one-third house burger. And then McDonald's is trying to compete with them, so they make a fun... Oh, sorry. Burger King has a one-fourth one house burger. And McDonald's want to compete with them, so they make a one-third one house burger. And if you do the math, now you, you can see clearly that one-third is greater than one-fourth. Because one-fourth is about 0.25, and one-third is about 0.3. And so one-third is, be is better, it's bigger. And so they say, oh, then everyone will come to the other strong and, you know, and buy their burgers and never buy from Burger King again. But people are being people. <laughs> They say, oh, actually 4 is greater than 3, so 4 is better, 4 is bigger. And of course, we, we can see that because we know about fractions. And we can kind of bully them, bully people who didn't understand what 1 fourth is smaller than 1 third. But again, if you, if you, if now we look at this new problem about logarithm, like what, what about base 2 base 3, if you compare them together, then in fact, and log base 2 is greater than log base 3. <clears throat> and the reason why that's true, again, just take a minute to, to think about it, is because well, we are trying to find a number A by two numbers. Uh, maybe let, let me write on the right end. Uh, if, you, if you want to compare these two numbers, let's say log base 2 of x, Let's say that's a, and then log base 3 of x, let's say that's b. Right, this implies 2 to the a is x. And this implies 2 to the b is x. So what are, what are a and b? Like which one should be higher? Which one should be smaller? <laughs> so you can see that um, since this base is, is higher, and the base 3 is higher, and then to get to the same value, and to get to the same value, let's say that there are like two, two generators, two rabbits and three rabbits, for instance. And to get to the same goal, now it, that it takes it takes shorter to, to multiply or to reproduce to get to a certain goal. Right, for instance, if x is, let's say x is about mm, 100. Now if your goal is 100, and then 3 to the power of 4, 4 is 81 already. 
Yeah, so you take you you only take you uh, you have to only multiply five times to get over one hundred. Yeah, so that number is about five. It's actually like four point something, but let's say it's five. Uh, in contrast to the other one, right, if you if your goal is one hundred, then you have to raise that to the power of seven. That give you one twenty eight. And to get, to reach the same goal, you have to you have to raise to you have to multiply to seven times. It takes a lot longer to get to that number. And so comparing A to B, like we can see from this example that B must be smaller than A. Right, because 3 raised to smaller number, that gives you <coughs> it's a number S2 raised to the other number. And so that's um that's what we can see from the graph and some justification like based on again definition and like not a math based on okay what this function looks like and what can we combine or compare them <clears throat> so that's the logarithm part and there's, there's some notes on definition and yeah it is necessary that the base is greater than zero and can the base be one because actually we, we, we didn't we didn't kind of like this allow the base to be one. <clears throat> we can have the base to be let's say one half. This is legal. Like log of base one half of four. And that, that that works and making is minus two because one over two to the power of minus two is four. <clears throat> and that's a way to to raise some to raise that number to some power to get to the result. Okay, but there are two cases when B is negative and when B is 1. Um, yeah, I think I have a question and an answer. Uh, the, uh, the question is yes, uh, we need B to be positive. Yeah, because this one is not a function. And actually, just, just try it. Yeah, because again, let's experiment. It is something we don't know about yet. So let's try to graph a function of log of b minus two. Since it's, this turns green, that means it it works, right? But can you see where it is? It's nowhere. But actually, it should it shouldn't work. But the way this uh, this software works, it yeah, it it works. But we we are not going to give you anything. Point five, yeah. Beta point five works, but we can use a negative one. And the reason is that uh, some there are no solutions for some values. Um, like actually, most values that don't have solution, like minus two to the power of y equals to x doesn't have a solution. Like because if you take minus two to the power of three, you should get minus eight, not eight. It's minus eight. And also, if you raise that to, to the power of one half, that's the square root of minus two, and that gives you a, a complex number, which we are not going to touch that portion yet. But it's a fun topic if you have time to study. I recommend that. So yeah, there are lots of problems about a negative base. <clears throat> so yeah, that means we just require it to be positive. <clears throat> and but it's also positive, but there's one issue. If the base is one, then whenever you ask for loss base one of a number, that it means you are you are looking for the solution of again one to the power of y is x. But one of one to the power of y is always one. <laughs> so that's a problem because that means this function only has like one point in it. And of course, let's try that. If we put one as a base, yeah, there should there should be a point there, but <clears throat> I think they just avoid it altogether. So yeah, that's another function. But everything else, like point one point one works, or uh, you know zero point nine works, yeah, but not one. One give you a weird function. I think that just like if you get one to the x, you just like that you get a. Just a lie. You don't get a real function in the first place. 
And so we don't have that. And lastly, about the definition. Yeah, is it, again, is it necessary, necessary that the, the value of x is positive? Right, because we have log base b of x. Right, we have some restriction on b, which is b is positive and b is not 1. Hmm. But what about x? You can see from the graph that x also needs to be positive. But it could be 1 now. And the, the reason why it has to be positive because, again, if you, if you try to find log base b of minus 5, right, that has no solution because um, if b is positive, right, then that translates into the problem about exponent where you find a value of y, where b to the y is minus 5. And if, if b is positive, let's say b is 2, right, then there's no solution for to that equation because a positive number to... Uh, Power is always not negative. It's always positive. That's a note on the definition and on some, you know, some requirements for this function to work.